Hello there, everybody. It's Bill McDonald, the reading and writing doctor. And today I want to talk about five reasons why students will need to combine sentences. There's quite a few, but I want to zoom in on the five most common things that are wrong with the content that the students read that they can easily fix by paying attention to little differences uh, between the sentences. And when they ask you to combine two sentences, it's always a sentence with a period, exclamation or question mark, followed by another sentence with a period, exclamation or question mark. And the idea is to come together right now. And you have to keep the meaning and the content and look for repetition and run-ons and for the, re for co the correct cause and effect relationships, the co correct compare and contrast relationship make, to make sure that there's a subject and a predicate. But let me show you a little graphic organizer, a little uh, anchor chart if you want to call it that, that I made that'll make it easier to remember the five most common reasons that you would want to combine sentences, okay? All right, um, number one uh, is when one of them is too short. So the, all the yellow that you see is the problem area that we'll talk about in the five examples. So let's say we have a short sentence period, short sentence, period. Well, yes, you would want to combine two short sentences to make one longer one. Let's say that one of them is, only one is short, but one is long. Well, you would still want to, you would still want to be able to say, you know what, I can try to figure out how to get this idea that's a complete thought and join it with this one. Remember that um, when we're talking about combining sentences, we're talking about combining two complete thoughts. There just is something wrong with the two sentences, the way they are written, or there's just maybe sometimes a better way to write them. And so there, there might be nothing wrong, but the, the skill is being tested on how to merge to collect correctly written sentences by singing that song come together right now. Compound subject, okay? Let's say you have uh, a person, a place, a thing, an idea, and another person or place or thing or idea doing the same thing. So basically you'd see that person doing one thing with a period and another person doing one thing without a period, with a period. Because of the repetition, you would want to join those two sentences because, and I made a little red brick around, around uh, so that you can think of a sentence or a paragraph like a wall. And for every word or phrase that's repetitious, it would be like having the same brick being used over and over. So there you would see in these two sentences because the two subjects were doing the same thing in consecutive sentences, you can uh, get rid of one of them and have um, a compound subject, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so did that one thing with one period. The third one, similar concept, The if you have one person doing something and that same person doing something else, and then you have a period, well, that again would be the idea. I uh, forgot to put uh, my period, so I'll do that right now. So since we have a compound predicate, uh, a, a certain place, um, Alamo is a small town period. Alamo is the home of my family. 
Alamo is a small town that is the home of my family. Alamo is a small town, comma, and it is the home of my family. And so just two ways to combine uh, a compound predicate and the repetition would be um, um, Alamo just needing to be one time whenever you have a compound predicate, well, you would just have the person, place, or thing or idea written one time, join the two sentences, and then have one ending punctuation. The fourth reason is when you have uh, two regularly written sentences, but you see, like we said, a paragraph is sort of like a wall, and I see, oh, this phrase right here is repeated again in this sentence, and so you would try to join two independent clauses that have repetition and remove the repetition, uh, and we met Mrs. PVC, the, remember her two R's were uh, repetition and run on well when you're combining sentences be careful not to turn them into a run on the last one is kind of my favorite one that i've made that you have a shirt that we'll call an independent clause because i got this shirt from an independent closet then i got these pants okay and they're typically uh the a, a, a period independent clause and a period and they're be perhaps in the lower grades another independent clause and a period. So uh, you would join them uh, without changing the meaning of the content with a, a comma and the fanboys. And the only reason I have the pants here, I have to remember the pants are also an independent clause. I got these pants from an independent closet. Then I got that shirt. I decided to join the two sentences together that were Complete thoughts, an independent clause that could have stood by itself with a comma, for, comma, and, comma, nor, comma, but, comma, or, comma, yet, comma, so. And so you would still have your two independent clauses, but you would have a comma, but, and just conveniently uh, a, a person's butt is right there below his belt, which we have our little comma. Uh, right before the conjunction. And then you would have one punctuation. Sometimes though you have some more complex sentences. Uh, it could be a dependent clause or an introductory phrase, possibly a comma and an independent clause followed by a period. And you would have an, then you might have an independent clause or it's possible that you might have uh, another dependent clause follow my independent clause at another period and so sometimes when you get these compound and complex sentences you have to figure out how do i join these together because it could be an independent clause followed by a dependent clause and an independent clause like two different sentences and you'd have to figure out how how, how do i use my fanboys to join these uh complex compound sentences so uh, there you have it. Uh, I want to keep that video short. Uh, in my next two videos, I'll take one secondary uh, and one elementary um, combining sentences, uh, applying some of these strategies that we learned so that you can see how to put them into action. If you have questions, feel free to email me there in the upper right-hand corner behind me, uh, or you can message me if you're watching on Facebook. Um, email me if you're watching on YouTube. I'll make sure that uh, I make the video student friendly so that if you decide you want to show it to your kids, that they don't get it blocked uh, uh, for any reason. Sometimes Facebook gets blocked. So whenever you are watching my videos and you want to show them to students, hey there students, if you're watching me right now, uh, Remember to go to the YouTube link and copy the YouTube link. That way you can watch it uh, at any time. Uh, click 
whenever you're uh, showing it to your students, click on the email that I sent you, which is the YouTube link, and that way for sure it won't get blocked uh, uh, as long as uh, it's kid-friendly. So thanks and God bless.